There has been a lot of confusion surrounding the character of Golden Freddy. Very little was known about this mysterious FNAF animatronic, yet we still became entranced with him. However, after more of the series has come out, we've gained more and more information about this character. We figured out who possesses the animatronic and that there are actually two souls inside of it. Actually, I think we're wrong about that. And I have proof. That's what we're exploring today. Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. I'm Connor Monroe and this is my FNAF theory. We were wrong about Golden Freddy. Let's do it. I originally stumbled upon this idea when researching more about my Michael Afton as a robot crying child theory, but this has nothing to do with that, I'm just providing context. The main piece of evidence I was looking for was that Cassidy would not share a vessel. So if Cassidy was possessing Golden Freddy, the amount of anger and agony that Cassidy has would not allow for another soul to possess the suit alongside her, no matter who it was, even if it was her killer's son. Especially not her killer's son. So it's just Cassidy possessing Golden than Freddy, I hear you asking, because this would just be circumstantial and based on your opinion of how you see the character of Cassidy. You could see her as being more than willing to share the suit with William's son since they both suffered the same wickedness, right? Yes, and that is entirely true, except I have some ideas that would present an entirely different solution to this problem. Allow me to explain. Fazbear Frights has given us hints as to how the game world operates over the last year or so. So far, with 9 books in the series being released, with the 10th coming out on my birthday this year and an 11th shortly after. However, there is one book that I'd like to call attention to, and I'm sure you can all tell which one it's going to be. In room 1280 of Heracles Hospital, something evil is keeping a man alive. A man with gruesome burns all over his body and an iron will to live. The man in room 1280 is the third story in the fifth Fazbear Frights book, Bunny Call. The only Fazbear Frights book that I currently own. For good reason. I have the 10th pre-ordered though, don't worry. The story, written by Andrea Wagner, revolves around a man with, as the book summary described, horrific burns all over his body. His organs are exposed, his face is missing, he has burn marks all over his body, and this man was taken off life support years prior to the story, yet somehow is still alive. The story ends with this horrifically damaged man being taken to a Fazbear Entertainment Distribution Center where he promptly explodes. This story is obviously meant to represent or very well be William Afton, who did end up escaping the FNAF 6 fire but was horrifically damaged because of it. The story was meant to show us that William had a soul possessing him, the soul of a young boy with curly black hair, rosy cheeks, and an alligator mask. The mask being in reference to the Happiest Day minigame from FNAF 2. This explained how William always came back, how he survived the spring locking, the FNAF 3 fire, the FNAF 6 fire, and how he possessed a hard drive to be scanned in FNAF ER. He was taken to the warehouse before his death. But one thing always really bothered me about this story. Who is that kid? From what I understand in the epilogue, the boy then becomes a second soul inside of the Stitch Wraith, and that's what made everyone think that Golden Freddy had two souls, but I don't think that's what the story was trying to tell us. There's always been some form of confusion around the one you should not have killed, the one who keeps torturing William in Ultimate Custom Night. We all thought that it was Cassidy, who we assumed to be Golden Freddy, who was the one doing it, that she had trapped William in purgatory and was making him relive the horrors that he caused over all those years. But that, with the release of this book, was disproven, since William wasn't in purgatory or hell, but rather his own mind, stuck in the hospital either on life support or just being kept alive by this spirit, meaning that this kid would have to be the main antagonist of that game, the one that we see shaking at the end if we manage to be 50-20 mode. This presents two different outcomes, neither of which are what we first expected though. Uh, they're it's it's weird. The, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go over them. Don't worry. First, the simple answer: the kid from the Fast Bear Frights books was just a deviation meant to show us that William was possessed by someone, showing us how he was kept alive. Meaning that someone in the games would most likely be Cassidy, and the one you should not have killed was not Golden Freddy. Cassidy, in this case, would not be able to be Golden Freddy, since while multiple souls can possess one thing in FNAF canon, we have not seen evidence that one soul can possess multiple things. In fact. That has been disproven time and time again in the series, with the puppet having to give life to the animatronics after they've had a soul, or I guess agony, inside of them. This would mean that Golden Freddy was either possessed by another soul, or that everything having to do with Golden Freddy is an illusion. The other outcome would be that this kid from the books, the boy with the alligator mask, is crying child. 
that William's son, after being sent to the hospital and put in a coma by Fred Bear, went on to possess his father and keep him alive after learning of his misdeeds. This is just as likely a scenario for me, if not even more likely, since it explains a lot of what we hear and see from characters in Ultimate Custom Night, such as Nightmare Fredbear, whose appearance should only be known to the crying child, but it presents itself in William's Nightmare, as well as multiple lines, such as we know who our friends are and you are not one of them, which is in reference to when the crying child dies at the end of FNAF 4, when psychic friend Fredbear says, we are still your friends, do you still believe that? But remember that those Fredbear plushies are actually cameras created by William to watch his son, meaning that this line, if it was coming from Fredbear, would really be coming from William, as would the line, I will put you back together, which is also referenced in Ultimate Custom Night, when Nightmare Fredbear says, I am remade, but not by you, by the one you should not have killed. How would Cassidy know about this line, about the I will put you back together, about the appearance of any of the Nightmare animatronics for that matter, unless she had seen them herself? If this was Crying Child, it would make a whole heck of a lot of sense, especially because of that line, I am remade, but not by you. It sounds sassy, like I was remade, but you didn't do it like you said you would. Like if your friend falls through on a promise, so then you say like, oh, I went bowling, but not with you. I have a friend who does that a lot. He's not even really a friend anymore, just because he is not really a good person. He's not watching, so it's fine. This also explains Nightmare's line of the shadow fears me, which I originally thought was meant to be about William fearing death, since the purple of the purple guy was meant to represent a shadow. But the one thing that made me sure about this theory was the fact that the alligator mask boy from the man in room 1280 is described as a shadow. If this is the crying child who was being referenced as a shadow, it would explain this line. Nightmare is the final antagonist of FNAF 4, the one that crying child fears the most, the representation of death, of William's wickedness. The crying child has to be the one who possesses William. I mean, it makes sense, William was there when crying child died, the Golden Freddy suit wasn't, but William was. When Crying Child died in the hospital, we know that from his lines going through psychic friend Fredbear, he was there with his son. As for why Golden Freddy is moving at the end of the game though, that could simply be a visual way of showing us that William would be back in the next game by having one of his victims convulsing. Or it could be Crying Child showing William a version of the Fredbear plush. I think that this has to be the explanation, and if not, then Scott needs to fix his narrative structure, because not only does this make sense, it works in a story sense as well, and honestly fits so many things into place, and feels good in a narrative sense. There we have it friends, my explanation as to how we were wrong about Golden Freddy. This theory makes so much sense to me, and honestly I didn't expect to come to that conclusion. The idea that I had in my head going into it was totally different than when I finished. The one you should not have killed is Crying Child. I mean, even William would consider him the one that you should not have killed. Damn. What are your thoughts on this theory and do you have anything to add? Be sure you let me know down below. While you do that, I'm going to read out some comments from previous videos. Annoying Toys said, stop cursing please. No, you think he can f***ing stop me from swearing? It doesn't even f***ing matter because every time I do, it gets f***ing censored. But honestly, who cares? Like the only reason swear words are swear words is because we assigned a bad connotation to them. Like if we stop thinking that these swear words are bad, then it wouldn't matter. Like swear words aren't bad words. They're just bad words because society has deemed them bad words that only adults should say. Plus look, now you've made the editor have to bleep out multiple swear words. Way to go. It's your fault, not mine. SCP-049 said, I love the Mumbo for Mayor shirt. Every, t thank you. Like every time I wear that, it, the comments are always so happy. They're happy to see it. And like, that's good. Like at least there's at least a little bit of an audience for the Minecraft stuff on this channel. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Pedro Contrade says, when is Bendy and the Dark Revival coming out? Let me answer this with more questions. When is Security Breach coming out? How long do I have left to live? Can the Pope's dick fit in a donut? The point is, we don't know, but hopefully soon. Don't question it, just move on. Jacob's Random Gaming said, never thought I would hear anything about this game ever again. Well, Jacob, you thought wrong. We're trying to expand past just FNAF that we kind of dug ourselves into, so if you have any other ideas for games you'd like to see us cover, let me know. 
please. Like, we can't really do it without your help since, y you know, you're the ones who watch the videos. So, help save what's left of my soul and comment a game that you'd like to see that isn't Five Nights at Freddy's. Please, every time I say this, there's always at least one person who says FNAF. And I specifically say that isn't FNAF, and they say FNAF. Please, comment games you want to see that are not FNAF, Five Nights at Freddy's, or any combination of those words. Please. Thank you for coming to my Fred talk. That's all the time we have for comments today. Thank you all so much for watching. I have Vin and Shower remain on a row, and I'll see you in another video, unless the FNAF community burns me at the stake for uh, giving this theory an idea.